your operations hub dashboard could look like. This is actually my personal dashboard that I've been using and creating and tinkering on. And I'm just going to walk through um, some of these pages here. I decided to do it for myself. I decided to include a business hub and a household hub uh, down at the bottom. So I've got a ton of pages and that's because I want everything to be in one spot. I was tired of, you know, everything just being scattered everywhere using, you know, Google Drive and Dropbox and wherever else that you end up having things stored. So I decided that I would find something where I can put everything all in one, where it would be easy for me to find. And you can see this search feature right up here. And it is if you type anything in here, anything in this document will show up. It will either pull pages or if anything is even mentioned, um, it will pull that up there. So if I type in finance up top, uh, you'll see that it has the finance page and it also has a task that has the word finance in it. So let's just go through some of these pages. Right here is my front page of my business dashboard. As you can see, I have um, bookmarked this page because I use it so much. It just makes it super easy to click on that whenever I need it and it pulls it up on the to-do productivity list. Um, I pull it up in the morning. It's up most of the day as I click through everything and then I pull up at night to do my brain dump and go through all my tasks for the next day. So as you can see, it's these are the sub pages that are on the business dashboard. If I go down to the household dashboard, it also has its own sub pages, um, health, habit, and reading list. So if we go through, if we want to click through uh, to some of these, let's check out the habit tracker. And basically what I did with the habit tracker, you can have today's date, add your habits. These are all customizable. So as I go through them, I would then click through the um, check mark and then it notes them. So this is a newly built dashboard and I could say, yes, I drank my water today. It checks it off and um, then it is stored into your monthly overview section. And this monthly overview section then has all of your habits that you had there and everything that you did. You can see what you're good at. You can see what needs work and um, just great to keep track of your personal habits that way. Also, let's check out the reading list that I just created. Just thought it was super cool uh, to incorporate your reading list. If you have a reading goal, if you're a reader, you can create uh, bookshelves here as I did what I want to read, currently reading and completed. Um, you just click a, click the new card and add a new book. You can also drag and drop. And if you notice, as I drag the book there, that number changes um, because I took it out of the completed column. So a lot of these dashboard pages are you know, customizable to what your business or your personal life, um, what you'd like to include. So I've got my to do and productivity list. I made it so that the date shows up at the top. It tells me how many open tasks I have left and how many frogs I have remaining. As you can see, I'm in the latter part of my day. I actually color coded my time as well. So I can take a quick look and see anything in the early morning is yellow. Um, anything with uh, red is going to be in the late morning and anything in the afternoon or evening is going to be blue. So if I've got anything that's in a different color than what I'm currently at, then I will know that I am, you know, I'm running behind. Um, I've got an also, I've got a little froggy column here. Uh, the frog for me is usually something that's going to take longer or something I tend to put off. Um, and I need to make sure that I make note of this and right here you can see record two new episodes um, that's for the podcast and then also um, you can do you can add new tasks here and I also configured it that if something was late you can also pass the due date it'll turn red to let you know that you are late on that item 
my brain dump section is basically just tasks that I think of, you know, you're on the go. Uh, Coda actually has an app, so you can type it in the app. It shows up here. It syncs immediately. And any thoughts and brain dump ideas section I also have here um, because, you know, things come up, you're in the shower, you're on the run, and you think of tasks and you don't know where to put them right now. So I do have a task to process my brain dump items. Um, and then, so if anything comes up, I can definitely put it on there. If I decide to move a brain dump item uh, from my back burner, I can switch it to today or next and it goes off of my brain dump list. And if I go back to the productivity page here, you will see that now I have this here. But the due date was, you know, November 7th initially, so it shows up red. But I can also change that due date to a future date um, for that as well. Also, one more thing I want to point out for the brain dump section, I did integrate my Gmail messages here. So if I tag a Gmail message as to do, I can sync it um, here and it will pop up here. It syncs every night for me. I have it running on an automation, but you can also sync it manually if you know that you had a bunch of to do's that you tagged for the day and you want to go ahead and take a look at them. You can do that. Once these email messages are here, you can push a button um, as you go through those messages to move it to your to-do list when you are ready. Um, so just a few more in the productivity section. I'll show you uh, my weekly review that I will do um, every Friday. I sit down and I just clear out, you know, clear out the downloads, do just basic operational things. This is the brain dump page we just left to. So you can actually um, link back to any page in the document or like this, you can link out to websites, um, you know, so that you can, it's easily, you can easily find it. And I think that's just a whole lot easier than having a bunch of bookmarks and, you know, all of that stuff. And it just makes it super easy. I'm already in the document. If I can just click to what I need, then it works out great. I also had a review journal down here. So I created this so that every week I can now go in and see exactly what my thoughts were for the week and where I'm looking. I did the same thing with a monthly review. So my monthly review has all of these things. Check out the business goals, podcast stats, update your recurring tasks if I need to change anything, and also enter a monthly review journal, which this is new, like I said. So um, haven't done those yet, but I did add boxes on the monthly one. Are your 90 day goals on track? Have you met your monthly goals? And that way I can have kind of a bird's eye view of how I've been doing. Here's another optional page that we can do. My daily summary. This is actually just a copy of the regular to-do list that we just saw. And this will be sent every morning to my email inbox. So those are the kind of things you can configure. I love that these automations happen automatically and I don't have to think about them. Um, backend data, all of your tasks are going to be here. Recurring tasks, so I have yearly recurring tasks, weekly, monthly, and daily recurring tasks that um, come up. So uh, these tasks will automatically uh, switch over. I think I have them at 1 a.m. every morning. All my tasks that need to be flipped over will be flipped. And um, depending on the day here for these weekly tasks, I even have chores in here, y'all, so that my chores will pop on there so that, you know, stuff that I don't normally think about, clean the garbage disposal, you know, wipe down the um, seat, wipe the banisters. So things that I don't normally think about that aren't on the top of my head, I want to go ahead and have those automatically populate. So going down to my operations section, let me just quickly touch on the accounts pages. I love that I can um, configure this and I just pop all my business accounts in there. It's just a quick way to have everything laid out. If I need to find a website or my login information, I did the same thing with my affiliate accounts because we always sign up for these affiliate um, accounts and then we don't know how to log in or where to check our stats things like that so um, brand guidelines let's check out this page everything 
for my brand, my current colors and fonts and logos and icons are in here. Um, anything that you think that you might want to include for your brand guidelines, maybe you have some details that you would like to have for a designer, like certain things or um, I have a social media page, so maybe you have a social media manager. You can then write all of those procedures down so that anyone coming in, it just makes it a lot easier to onboard. And it's easier for you too if you have to go do some Instagram posts or whatever. You know exactly what schedule you like to do and things like that. I've got our products and services page. Um, let's take you through the Coffee Powered Systems. This is the podcast page. Um, as you can see, I've got a bunch of different sub pages for my podcast. And this is one of the reasons that I decided to make a hub because I had a bunch of things everywhere. I had things in Amazon S3 folders. And then I started using Google Drive at one point. And then I have to upload the MP3 files and it's a mess. You know, you have sheets everywhere and docs everywhere. I just want to have one thing that I can easily go to and know exactly where to find it. So the content idea bucket, um, any content ideas that I have coming up, my editorial calendar, here's what's coming up and I have it in a calendar view as well. There's different views that you can put onto your, there's table views, um, drag and drop card views, Gantt chart views and calendar views. So however you like to work best, those are a great way to do it. And then I also have a whole published episode list so I can go back through here. And if I wanted to um, see in particular where my, you know, and you can search here too, um, what am I looking at, right? If I'm like, where was that Asana? Then there it is my Asana episode and I know that it's number seven and I can quickly find all of those. Makes it super easy and I love having everything all in one spot. Uh, last thing I'll show you, uh, or two things, I'll show you the show graphics I have here so I can easily like pull those when I need to. And then my show notes section, I love. I have all of my um, show notes that I pulled in here. I started doing this so I did it from 34 on and um, what I do now is I just go to the templates over here I have a template for the solo and the guest and I can just duplicate that and then go to the um, show notes section so it links back to the editorial calendar so I can quickly go there and then my template so I just plug and play everything in there and I know exactly where everything is and it makes it super easy. And at the end of the month, um, I can check up on my podcast stats and I quickly drop those in there as well. All right, so let's do a couple more things. Let's look at these uh, finance section. I've got a finance area that I can put um, my income, personal bill pay, business bill pay, credit card payments. So I track my income and expenses in here. And one thing I wanna show you about the personal bill pay section is that you can actually, um, like I said before, link out to your bills. And what I do is I have one of my recurring tasks is pay my personal bills. So on the 1st and the 15th, and today's the 16th, so you can see, mm, most of my bills are actually all of my bills for the month are paid. So um, on the 1st and the 15th, a recurring task pops onto my task list, says pay the bills, and it links back to this personal bill pay page. These just make it super easy. I just click on it and pay the bill, check it off when I'm done. Um, when I'm done for the month, I can click this button and it will clear all those back out and they'll show back up uh, for next time. And then this grocery tracker and eating out tracker I just did um, for kicks literally yesterday, um, seeing how I can, um, you know, be more diligent about eating out and getting groceries, things like that. So that is it. Um, it's So it's very customizable based on whether or not you, you know, maybe if you have a blog post and you want to do something like the content areas 
or if you're just looking for a business hub or you just want to do a personal hub, um, let me also check. This is a one that I'm doing for a client. She actually has a team and they all have their own task lists here. So they all have their own to-do lists and then it they all funnel into the main team to-do list so she can easily see what everyone is working on as well. Uh, she has a sales pipeline and a client intake pipeline. So I love that it is so customizable. You can basically do what you want and everything is just sheets and docs. So if you know how to use Google Drive, uh, you can definitely use this. And what I do is basically just build it out for you. So we'll go through your intake forms and your intake sheets and find out exactly what you're looking for. I take one day to build out um, as many pages as possible. We start with your most important pages and then we can go from there. Um, I configure the automations for you and everything that you can need and then we go over it at the end of the day. I'll shoot you either a little video to walk through it or we can hop on a call um, after you watch the video and um, that's it. So if you are interested in doing a business dashboard hub for yourself, uh, definitely reach out to me. You can find me at mirandamerton.com slash VIP or just um, reach out on Instagram. I'm at Miranda Merton.